Hello, glad you're with us today. My name is Steve Turner and I'm a Sunday school teacher here at United Methodist Church in Starkville. And I want to uh, share some lessons with you on Solomon. So in our Sunday school class, we have begun a series of lessons on Solomon. And Solomon is mostly known for his wisdom, but really Solomon has three W's that he should be known for. That's wisdom, wealth, and women. And so we will be going over those components of Solomon's life over the next few uh, weeks. Uh, first of all, let me give you a little introduction on um, the process that we'll be going through. So in our Sunday school lessons, we usually read the Bible, uh, and then we take a uh, discussion. We start discussing the pieces of the Bible or the sections that we read. So that'll be the, the kind of process and the, and the approach we will use here during this series also. I might also add, if you have an interest in Solomon or any of uh, Bible lessons, I invite you to join us. We meet every uh, Sunday morning at 10 o'clock uh, here at United Methodist. So what about Solomon and why, why are we studying Solomon? Well, again, Solomon is famous for his wisdom, and he has many... Uh, writings about it. He wrote much of the Proverbs in the Old Testament. Uh, he's known for Ecclesiastes and also Song of Solomon. So our approach is going to be first and today we'll concentrate um, on the beginning part of his life and his uh, kingship and then we'll finish up with uh, some of the things he did as king and then we'll move on to Proverbs and possibly Ecclesiastes and Song of Solomon uh, seeing how much time we have. So let's, let's first start with Solomon's beginnings. And to look at Solomon's <clears throat> beginnings, you have to kind of know something about his father and mother. Many of you will remember that his father is David and his mother is Bathsheba. And many of you will remember the story of David and Bathsheba, and it's not a very pretty story especially it doesn't reflect well on David. And so um, we start the story after uh, Bathsheba has had a child by David. That child dies. And so we start our, we start our story in um, 2 Samuel uh, chapter 12, verse 24. So I'm going to read that and then we'll stop there. Then David comforted his wife Bathsheba, and he went to her and made love to her. She gave birth to a son, and they named him Solomon. The Lord loved him, and because the Lord loved him, he sent word through Nathan the prophet to name him Jedidiah. All right, so we begin the life of Solomon with David going to Bathsheba after she had lost a child, comforting her. Uh, they, the result of that is they have a new son, another son, Solomon. And what is interesting here is the sentence that we see, the Lord loved him. So we see from the beginning of Solomon's life, the Lord had a special place for Solomon. And so we don't have a lot of material on Solomon's life up until... He, he is a, a young man, and he uh, is, is vying for the kingship. But we can kind of conjecture on some of the things that he would have experienced during his life because he was uh, a son uh, of a king. His mother uh, was one of his favored wives, and David had many wives. Uh, Solomon was not in, in any way his first son, David's first son, We'll talk a little bit about some of his other sons, and especially uh, one who come, is a, a major component in the Solomon story. But again, we see right away that the Lord loved Solomon. That's going to be important because the Lord is going to direct Solomon in many ways. Another character that's important to Solomon's life is Nathan. And Nathan is a prophet and kind of a, a confidant of David. And if you remember, Nathan is the person who confronted David 
uh, when he uh, sent Uriah, Bathsheba's husband, into battle and basically ha had him killed. Uh, he sent him into battle, told uh, Joab to have him at the front of the line, and he knew very well that that was kind of a death sentence for Uriah. So Nathan confronted David with that. Uh, David repented, was very sorrowful, uh, realized what he had done. And, and Nathan is going to continue to be a confidant or a, a counsel to, to David in his 40 years as king. So we think that, that Solomon would have had the benefit of the king's court and really, the thing to remember there is in the king's court, um, there were advantages for a young person. And one of the major advantages we need to think about with respect to Solomon is the access to knowledge. And not just spiritual knowledge, but all kinds of knowledge. And remember, David uh, consolidated the kingdoms, and so he's going to be a really powerful king. Not, not as maybe powerful as Solomon in the, in the secular world, but he's going he's gonna to bring the kingdoms together, and he's going to be looked upon, as we all know, as a man of God. So, Solomon has this advantage of access to knowledge, both spiritual knowledge and other kinds of knowledge, natural knowledge, and you're going to see that that's going to show up later in his life and during his kingship. So we, we don't have a lot in the Bible about him growing up, but we can uh, turn over to 1 Kings. And again, you remember, uh, this is kind of early in the life of Israel as a nation, and so they're not they haven't had a lot of kings up until this point. Now remember Saul was the first king, then he's followed by, by David, and then we're going to get, uh, you know, because David has many sons, there's going to be some uh, competition for the kingship. And so what we see there is um, some of the sons, and, and probably the most famous competition is Absalom, which was uh, a son that he had um, that was very charming. He had a lot of charisma. He was good looking. And at one point... Uh, Absalom decided that he would, he would take the throne from his father David. Uh, that didn't turn out well for Absalom. It didn't really turn out well for David either. And then that puts us at this place uh, later, almost at the end of David's life, where we start in 1 Kings. And I'm going to read some there, and then I'll stop, and we'll have a discussion, and then we'll go on from there. So we're in 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 1. And I'm going to put on my glasses so I can see better. When King David was very old, he could not keep warm even when they put covers over him. So his attendant said to him, Let us look for a young virgin to serve the king and take care of him. She can lie beside him so that our lord, the king, may keep warm. Then they searched throughout Israel for a beautiful young woman and found a bishag, a Shunanite, who, and brought her to the king. The woman was very beautiful. She took care of the king and waited on him, but the king had no sexual relations with her. Now Adoniah, whose mother was Haggath, put himself forward and said, I will be king. So he got chariots and horses ready with 50 men to run ahead of him. His father had never rebuked him by asking, why do you behave as you do? He was also very handsome and was born next after Absalom. Adonijah conferred with Joab, son of Uriah, and Abathar, the priest, and they gave him their support. But Zadok, the priest, Benaniah, son of Jehodiah, Nathan, the prophet, Shimei, and Rai, and David's special guard did not join Adonijah. Adonijah then sacrificed sheep, cattle, and fattened calves at the stone of Zoheleth near Enrol, Rogel. He invited all his brothers, the king's son, and all the, old, the royal officials of Judah. But he did not invite Nathan the prophet, or Benaniah, or the special guard, or his brother Solomon. 
Then Nathan asked Bathsheba, Solomon's mother, Have you not heard about Ad Adonijah, the son of Haggath, who has become king? And our Lord David knows nothing about it. Now then, let me advise you how you can save your own life and the life of your son Solomon. Go in to King David and say to him, My lord the king, did you not swear to me your servant? Surely Solomon your son shall be king after me, and he will sit on my throne. Why then has Adonijah become king? While you are still there talking to the king, I will come in and add my word to what you have said. So Bathsheba went to see the aged king in his room, where Abishag the Shunammite was attending him. Bathsheba bowed down, prostrating herself before the king. What is it you want? the king asked. She said to him, My lord, you yourself swore to me, your servant by the Lord your God, Solomon your son shall be king after me, and he will sit on my throne. But now Adonijah has become king, and you, my lord the king, do not know about it. He has sacrificed great numbers of cattle, fattened calves, and sheep, and has invited all the king's son, Abathar the priest, and Joab the commander of the army. But he has not invited Solomon, your servant. My lord the king, the eyes of all Israel are on you, to learn from you who will sit on the throne of my lord the king after him. Otherwise, as soon as my lord the king is laid to rest with his ancestors, I and my son Solomon will be treated as criminals. While she was still speaking with the king, Nathan the prophet arrived, and the king was told, Nathan the prophet is here. So he went before the king and bowed with his face to the ground. Nathan said, Have you, my lord the king, declared that Adoniah sh shall be king after you, and that he will sit on your throne? Today he has gone down and sacrificed great numbers of cattle, fattened calves, and sheep. He has invited all the king's sons, the commanders of the army, and Abathar the priest. Right now they are eating and drinking with him and saying, Long live King Adonijah. But me, your servant, and Zadok the priest, and Benaniah, son of Jehoadiah, and your servant Solomon, he did not invite. Is this something my lord the king has done without letting his servants know who should sit on the throne of my lord the king after him? All right, let's stop there for a minute. All right, so this gives us the context, the background of Solomon becoming king. He just didn't become king uh, in a smooth way. This is going to be kind of an awkward way. And Ad Adonijah has... Uh, has basically done the same thing that Absalom done has had did, but in a little different way. Now, when we think about Adoniah, he's also good looking. He probably has charisma, and he is older than Solomon. Now, we we can think of Solomon as we don't know exactly what Solomon looks like. We don't know uh, much about him, as I, as we mentioned. Uh, growing up, but we do know that he's pretty smart. That's one thing that we do know. And you're going to see that uh, in the next few series uh, or the next uh, few chapters here, how he operates as king. But Adoniah takes over, basically he's trying to take over the kingship. What's interesting is he doesn't go to his father and do this. He goes to his allies. So he goes to the priest, and a crucial component of his actions are Joab. And Joab is a commander. Uh, it says he's a commander of the armies. But he has been uh, a very strategic person in David's life, and especially David's military life. Joab has been uh, kind of his field general. And so he, Adoniah, Adoniah gets these allies and says, I'm going to be king. There must have been something there that he had. He had either charisma, he had something. He was good looking. Uh, so we know that he had something. And they joined him. But it says at the beginning of this uh, scripture that David was very old. David is going to have reigned 40 years. And so, as you remember, it, he was a young man 
And uh, when Saul became king, he had to hide out a bit. Uh, when Saul became jealous of him and thought he was going to take the kingship, which he eventually did. And so David is old. He's got lots of sons. He really has not been that great a father. And we know that because even with Adoniah, it says um, in verse 6, his father had never rebuked him by asking, why do you behave as you do? So what we see there is, is David was, I don't know if he was an absentee father or what, but he wasn't heavily involved in, in um, Adoniah's life, and we don't think probably he was heavily involved in Solomon's life either. So these, these young men were dependent on the, sur the surrounding people and especially their mothers. All right, And you're going to see that with uh, Solomon because he had a real advantage because his mother was Bathsheba. And he had another huge advantage in that Nathan uh, was kind of, I don't want to say his godfather, but, but Nathan had a real uh, love for Solomon and was going to help him. And we see that because Nathan goes to Bathsheba and advises her, tells her exactly what to do. And then he says, and I will come in afterwards, I will follow you and support what you say. And that's what happened. So let's continue. So again, what we're doing here is we're looking at how did Solomon become king. So we're in 1 Kings chapter 1, and now we're in verse 28. Then King David said, call in Bathsheba. So she came into the king's presence and stood before him. The king then took an oath. As surely as the Lord lives, who has delivered me out of every trouble, I will surely carry out this very day what I swore to you by the Lord, the God of Israel. Solomon, your son, shall be king after me, and he will sit on my throne in my place. Then Bathsheba bowed down with her face to the ground, prostrating herself before the king, and said, May my lord King David live forever. King David said, Call in Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaniah, son of Jehoiada. When they came before the king, he said to them, Take your Lord's servants with you, and have Solomon my son mount my own mule and take him down to Gihon. There have Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him king over Israel. Blow the trumpet and shout, Long live King Solomon. Then you are to go up with him, and he is to come and sit on my throne and reign in my place. I have appointed him ruler over Israel and Judah. Benaniah, son of Jehoiada, answered the king, Amen. May the Lord, the God of my lord, the king, so declare it. As the Lord was with my lord, the king, so may he be with Solomon to make his throne even greater than the throne of my lord, King David. So Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Benaniah, son of Jehoiada, the Carathites, and the Pelophites went down and had Solomon mount King David's mule, and they escorted him to Gihon. Zadok the priest took the horn of oil from the sacred tent and anointed Solomon. Then they sounded the trumpet, trumpet, and all the people shouted, Long live King Solomon. And all the people went up after him, playing pipes and rejoicing greatly, so that the ground shook with the sound. Adonijah and all the guests who were with him heard it as they were finishing their feast. On hearing the sound of the trumpet, Joab asked, What is the meaning of all the noise in the city? Even as he was speaking, Jonathan, son of Abathar, the priest, arrived. Adonijah said, Come in. A worthy man like you must be bringing good news. Not at all, Jonathan answered. Our lord King David has made Solomon king. The king has sent with him Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Benaniah son of Jehoiada, and the Carathites and the Pelathites, and they have put him on the king's mule. And Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet have anointed him king at Gihon. From there they have gone up cheering, and the city resounds with it. That's the noise you hear. Moreover, Solomon has taken his seat on the royal throne. Also, the royal officials have come to congratulate 
our Lord King David, saying, May your God make Solomon's name more famous than yours and his throne greater than yours. And the king bowed in worship on his bed and said, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, who has allowed my eyes to see a successor on my throne today. At this, all Adonijah's guests rose in alarm and dispersed. But Adonijah, in fear of Solomon, went and took hold of the horns of the altar. Then Solomon was told, Adonijah is afraid of King Solomon and is clinging to the horns of the altar. He says, Let King Solomon swear to me today that he will not put his servant to death with the sword. Solomon replied, If he shows himself to be worthy, not a hair of his head will fall to the ground. But if evil is found in him, he will die. Then King Solomon sent men, and they brought him down from the altar. And Adonijah came and bowed down to King Solomon. And Solomon said, Go to your home. All right, so we've seen the transition now. Now Solomon is king. And he has treated his brother, who is kind of a half-brother, he has treated him with uh, mercy, at least at this point in time. He tells him to go home. So there are a couple of lessons here, even, even this, this early in our, in our study. The first lesson is um, it's probably better to be very prepared and to wait your turn. So we see with Absalom and Adonijah that both of them uh, did not wait their turn, so to speak. They were not anointed king. They thought they could be king uh, by taking, uh, by seizing control. And that did not work. Now you got to remember, the most important thing that that we're talking about here is we're reading the Bible. Okay, so this is the Bible, and so the perspective here is mankind and God. And if God is not on your side, you will not win. You might win in the short term, but you will not win in the long term. And Solomon, we know, knew this, and he knew that his kingship was dependent on his anointment by his father David. Nathan knew this. Bathsheba knew this. So it wasn't military control. It wasn't anything like that. It wasn't public support. <clears throat> it was simply David acknowledging Solomon as the king. And you've got to remember, at this time in history, uh, the people looked upon the king as the ruler. They looked upon the king as the leader, and they followed the king. If you remember, the, the Jews asked God for a king. He was displeased with that request, but he gave them a king. He gave them Saul. And then after Saul, we, we see David solidified the kingship. He really solidified the kingdom. And the, the culmination of that, the culmination of the kingdom of Israel really comes through Solomon. If you remember, David wanted to build a temple, but God told him, no, you will not build a temple. Your son will build a temple. Solomon builds the temple. Solomon is going to be a very uh, astute king. He's going to be a very astute politician. We're going to see that in his alliances but it's also going to have repercussions for his personal life. It's also going to have repercussions for his relationship with God. So, the first thing we learn is be prepared, be patient, and when the time comes, uh, take the opportunity and go with it. This is what uh, David did. Now again, he had mercy on Adoniah, although they were probably not that close because, uh, as you can imagine, uh, David had many sons by many wives. He also had sons by his many concubines. But again, they were there was some relationship there, or there was at least some uh, political relationship. He also knew that, that Ad Adoniah had some political following also. 
And Solomon was very astute politically. Again, we don't know where he learned that, but he had good mentors. Nathan, uh, we don't talk about Nathan a whole lot unless we're talking about uh, David's uh, experience with Bathsheba where Nathan corrected him and David took the correction and was repentant of that. But Nathan, Nathan has followed David for his full 40 years. So Nathan is a confidential uh, person that, Nath, that David looks to for advice. So again, that's who's in Solomon's corner. We'll kind of round out our, our, our lesson today with going back to our original uh, premise here. When we talk about Solomon, there are three major things that we're going we're gonna to be examining. The major thing that we will examine is his wisdom. And not only his wisdom, if you look at Proverbs, and that, that'll be a future lesson, we'll spend a, quite a bit of time in Proverbs, but if you look at Proverbs, it's not just Solomon's sayings. It's not just Solomon's thought. He draws from others who are wise also. And that's another lesson. Another lesson is to learn. Uh, one of the, the, the fantastic things about uh, Bible lessons in Sunday school is every Sunday we get together and we read the Bible. Now, hopefully, we're reading the Bible during the week and studying the Bible. But the Bible has some great lessons for us. Now, in this series, we're concentrating on Solomon and the Old Testament. But I want to remind you there's good news because the things that happen in the Old Testament are pointing to a new day, are pointing to a new person. And so the real thing that we need to remember is that Jesus who, if we are Christians, and we're Christians, uh, pointed us to a relationship with God that we can have individually, a personal relationship. And that, again, is what we're studying and how to deepen that relationship and widen that relationship to not only a personal relationship with God, but also a relationship with our fellow, uh, fellow human beings that reflects our relationship to God. So again, uh, I want to close out the lesson uh, and remind you that our next lesson will be uh, talking about Solomon, his wisdom, his wealth, and the women around him. Thank you very much. See you next time.